In this video, we're going to go through how you can quickly get started developing your reports in Power BI Desktop for the first time. I'm going to show you how to install it the correct way and also want to give you some of my recommended settings to get you started the correct way. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you wanna get started developing your reports within Power BI, you'll most likely get started with Power BI Desktop. And if you don't have it yet, you most likely need to download it and install it first. Microsoft provides a couple different ways that you can install Power BI Desktop. The first place that you will find it is to download it from directly from the download center in Microsoft. So when you Google Microsoft Power BI Desktop to download, it will bring you to this page where it will give you an option to download a 64-bit desktop setup here, which will let you download and install Power BI Desktop. And this is actually how I've been doing it for years. So what it does is it installs the latest version of Power BI Desktop into your local machine which is fine. However, Power BI or the Power BI team releases updates, monthly updates very frequently with a lot of new features that you want to take advantage of. So if you download and install Power BI desktop like this, you will need to do this every single month to take advantage of those new features that they release. So I actually found that the better way for you to install Power BI desktop is by installing it through the Microsoft store. So if you have a Windows machine, you can download and install Power BI Desktop this way as well. It's a fairly simple process, but what it does is that it makes sure that your Power BI Desktop is always up to date every time there is a new monthly feature. So this actually will save you a lot of time and effort to updating your Power BI Desktop and make sure that you can always use those new features that they release. So once you've downloaded and installed Power BI Desktop into your local machine, it will ask you to sign in to your Power BI account. Now this is optional, which means that you can already get started with working and developing your Power BI reports in your desktop without signing in. However, you are missing out on some of the features that you could take advantage of if you are signed in. Creating a Power BI account is free. And it's pretty simple if you already have an enterprise email to use. But if you only have a personal email address, a Yahoo or a Gmail email address, you won't be able to create a Power BI account. So you will need to make sure that you create it from your work email. However, if you don't have the option to use a work email address, I do have a video covering how you can create your own Power BI account using just your personal email address. So go check that video out if you haven't yet. Power BI Desktop, when it's installed for the first time, is configured to be as beginner friendly as possible, which means that there will be settings that you might want to adjust, enable or disable to follow best practices so that when you're building more complex reports, it will be a lot easier for you to transition into them. So in Power BI Desktop, what you'll need to do is go to the gear icon on the settings menu here, which will bring up this options here. So it has a bunch of different settings that you can configure both globally. So all, all across all of your different reports and for your current file. So the first thing that I always recommend people to disable is under the data load under global is to disable the auto date time for new files. So this setting is enabled by default because Power BI wants users to quickly get started and create simple reports based on the data that they load. Having this feature enabled ensures that if users want to present their you know, time data in a graph or a chart, any date time column that they have will already have a date hierarchy enabled for them, which makes it a lot easier for beginners to visualize them. However, in practice, and especially when you start to create more complex uh, data models, you will find that the more date columns you have, with this feature enabled, it will kind of bloat your data set size. And that's because for every date field that you have, Power BI actually creates an auto date time calendar for each of those columns, 
so that you have a way to present them on your Power BI reports, which is not really best practice. And I always recommend people to create their own singular calendar table, which all of the other files connect to, where you can control, you know, how big that calendar is and what kind of slices is available for you. We're going to go back to that in a minute, but for now, just make sure that you disable this and uh, we're going to go back to how you can create your own calendar tables. So the next thing that you want to disable is under current file and data load. You want to make sure to disable auto detect new relationships after data is loaded. So when beginners first boot up Power BI desktop and load in their data, they probably won't have any concept of how relationships work. And this is meant to help them get started very quickly by automatically finding what the matching columns are between different query files that they load so that when they do present it in a visual format, the relationships are already created for them. So Power BI can recognize how they're related from each other. However, this becomes a little bit of a challenge, especially when you scale your models to have more queries, because every time you load a new file, Power BI will automatically create relationships for you, which you won't really have control of. Well, you can delete them, but they can continue to create every time you load in a new file, which can be a little bit cumbersome, at least from my perspective. So it's always better to have a bit more manual control over this. So I always make sure that whenever I start a new Power BI report, I disable this feature. And lastly, but this is a more of a personal preference, under current file and report settings, I always enable this feature, change default visual interaction from cross-highlighting to cross-filtering. So cross-highlighting and cross-filtering happens when you select a section in one of the visuals in your report, and it determines how the other visuals kind of present itself. So visuals like bar charts or pie charts would either just highlight the select selection that you've created or filter it altogether. From my personal experience, it's always been more intuitive to have these visual interactions to be cross filtering instead of cross highlighting, because the kind of proportions of what you see in the cross highlighting can get a little bit confusing, or at least how it works is not very intuitive for a lot of my customers. So I always make sure that I change this default visual interaction, which is something that everyone is kind of used to how it works. So the next thing that I would recommend to you before you get started developing your reports is by going to the preview features in this same settings options menu. So under preview features. So what you will have here are some of the features that the Power BI team has released in kind of preview before they become a default and release for general availability. So what I would recommend for you is to basically enable all of these features so that you can start taking advantage of them. They are features that I would kind of classify as on beta test. But from my experience, they've always been kind of production ready. They are usually just either missing a feature or maybe they just need to do some more testing before, you know, they can roll it out to general availability. But for the most part, I always just enable all of these so that I can start taking advantage of them because they release a lot of new features every month. And it's always good to get used to them before they become generally available. The last thing that I would recommend to you before you get started is to actually start to install and use some of the external tools that are available for you. So these are third party tools that are created by the community that can help you do a bunch of things that are either not available for you in the Power BI desktop UI or basically it's just some quality of life features that you can use to make your life a little bit easier. So in this machine, for example, under external tools, you will find that I installed Bravo, but there are other external tools that is actually pretty useful, like uh, tabular editor or studio. But uh, Bravo is something that uh, is created by the SQL BI team, and it can do a bunch of things like, you know, being able to export your table data. But what is actually very useful for that I use it quite frequently for is to be able to create your own calendar tables. So this is what I was talking about, where you can create or you would want to create your own singular calendar table that you manage where all of your files kind of uh, connect to. 
and it makes that whole process a lot easier because it provides you with you know a lot of different things that you would need to set up yourself such as holidays you know weekends uh, calculation for fiscal periods, things like this. And that's really it for this video. So there are a bunch of other tips that I can give you when you're setting up your Power BI desktop for the first time. Uh, so we're going to stop from here, but obviously from here, there are other things that you could probably look at setting up, like creating a measures table or maybe creating a JSON for your, you know, branding, maybe creating some templates for your layouts just to keep your reports consistent. But I think this is basically a good kind of wrap up of some of the things that um, you can use to quickly get started the right way in Power BI Desktop. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.